Why, hello there, folks. Welcome to another round of Modern. This is Dylan from Alternate Universes, and on the left, we have Mark Mara playing Kahira Elementals, and on the right, we have Leela Mockin playing Red, White, and Blue Control. If you don't know what that is, it is Blue, White, Control with Red and Six in the back. Uh, now, if that feels like a painful sentence for you, I can understand. It's a very good deck. Uh, there's been somebody who crafted it, posted it on Twitter. They were doing well on leagues and on, um, I think, Moto Jousers, too. And I'm pretty sure the same person pop the event at MTG Las Vegas. So if that's the case, that person, that person rocks. Uh, but yeah, it's it's quite literally just blue eye control with red and sixes. I don't think there's a single thing in the main board that you splash red or green for besides red. Uh, you might... It, you have the domain stuff anyways to get Leyland Binding. Uh, to one mana, and then, yeah, it's, it's pretty much your stock list to pull that control after that. I don't think any, the sideboard does get a little bit different, like you play like fail some reason stuff. Now one thing I will say about Renton in this deck that I like a lot is it makes Jason Mind Sculptor a lot better. If you have talked to me in the last two years about anything blue-white control related, I am not the biggest fan of Jace the Mind Sculptor in current modern. I think the card is good. A very passing greed good. Um, it's just not It's not as powerful as it used to be. The game is more powerful than it seemed to be back then. But what I will say is the brainstorm ability really good when you're constantly going to have a fetch land in play. You do get the sculptor hand, uh, no pun intended to be whatever you really need at the bay is lets you get rid of extra land for you know that Ren gives you and it's golden. It's really cool. My coworker has been playing the deck a little bit. I know he replaced Jason Mind Sculptor with Wonder Emperor. I'm not the biggest fan of that change. I don't love the Wander Emperor. I think it's a very good card. I just whenever I've played it or played against it, it always feels super underwhelming. But that Sample size isn't massive. I think I've maybe played against it like 10 to 15 games. So, who knows? Uh, I very well could be wrong. It's probably excellent against Murktide. But, yeah. So here's Mark casting a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Gonna make a Goblin, Goblin Shaman token, which will immediately get Prismatic Ending. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, fantastic modern card. Modern card. Love it a lot. I recently just put together a deck and I was like, alright, can I just take basically four of every card that I love in Modern and see if we can make a deck out of it? The answer is kinda, yeah. It's a little scary. It's not an excellent deck by any means. There's definitely better ways to build it. But the current configuration is fun. Right, that is a Camera of Souls naming Elementals. Here comes Omnath, Locus of Creation. <laughs> Gonna get to draw a card. That Camera Squad on Leland's hand is doing a fat nothing. Kahir Elementals, a deck that Mark has played a lot in the past. Uh, him and I have talked about four color and have played four color for months now. And I think him, I can safely say that him and I both enjoyed the Kahir version of the decks over the 80 card piles. Obviously, the 80 card piles were better, but enjoyment wise, the Kahir Elemental deck a lot more interesting, a lot more entertaining. I wonder if he's playing Flamekin Harbinger. That was my favorite version of the deck. You play Flamekin Harbinger? Also the version of the deck that I got bodied by uh, at one of our Wilmington Shop Championships. And speaking of AU store events, let's do a little bit of advertisement time, specifically for our modern RCQ that we're hosting at Alternate University Blue Bell on Saturday, December 17th. It is a RCQ event, so you'll be able to earn an invite to the Anaheim Regional Championship. I don't exactly know why we're giving out invites to an Anaheim event or a California Regional event when we're in Pennsylvania, but hey, that's WotC. I'm not going to argue with that. We're giving out invites to first and second place, so you get two shots during this event. You just got to make the finals, and I believe in you. Insert person listening here. All of the extraneous details will be posted on, on our website. Drop turn. But it will most likely be a registration at uh, 11, start at noon type of shenanigans. Cut the top eight. There are pins involved for the top eight, promos involved for the top eight. 
That'll be cool. I will be there in some capacity. I will either be recording or playing. I have not decided which. Uh, I'm kind of tempted by the idea of playing the event, but I also think the content would be super cool to get. But back to the game. Leland flashing into Solitude here. Got rid of an Omnath. Mark playing another Omnath. His Fable has flipped to a reflection of Kikijiki. We didn't play land game for like a fetch with four mana. We were doing the Omnath thing. We're going to cast a Solitude, exiling Leland Solitude. Leland is going to look at that hand. And he's just going to scoop it up. My friend, he does not have anything in hand, really. Fast track the game two. Mark took game one if you weren't sure what happened there. Leland's going to leave on Scalding Tony past the turn. Leland just like wasn't able to do anything. The Cavern Soul is really just shutting down the ability to counter spell a single creature in Mark's deck. It's really big. I didn't get my. Um, I'm fetch a green pool here. This the Oblivion Ring from Kamigawa. Touch the. Touch the. You know, what I will say, I think it's Shaman's. So, Companion, obviously not a no game again. So I believe they honestly should have banned the mechanic instead of banning the cards. I think it would be cool to be able to play Luris and Yorion in decks, like in the main board, or as a sideboard option. But Companion should have been axed almost immediately. When they had to make the change the first time, they should have realized that they effed up, and instead of just errata, doing an errata to an entire game mechanic, you just banned the mechanic. I think it's a little bit easier for new players to stomach. It sucks for both. Like, both aspects suck for new players, but... I don't know. What are all saying? Yorion is a cool card, being able to like play and flicker so stuff. Lurus, I think it'd be a really cool card <laughs> to be able to like play it, do some shenanigans with Bobble. Um, Obviously, still really strong, but I think as a main board creature, it might be okay to keep in the uh, keep in the format. Mark playing the Oathness on turn one. Card that has seen a lot less play in modern lately. It was in the 80 card pile. I don't know if he's going to see much more play now that Yorion is gone. Uh, it does see a good amount of play in Pioneer in the modern green deck. If you don't know what it does, when it enters the battlefield, it's a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you have the top three cards of your deck, and you may put a land creature or planeswalker into your hand. And the other cool part of it is that you can spend mana of any type to cast planeswalkers. So if Mark plays a basic planes here, he can cast a Ren Six. The best application is to play, to be able to play Cavern of Souls and cast uh, Ren into Fairy off of it. Speaking of basic planes into Ren and Six, there it be. Able to do that because of the Earth and the Sea. Picks up the Queen's Red Teeth, puts it in his hand, passes the thing. Just wanted to prove it that he could. Uh, did you say pass? Did it get there? Uh, on tap Ooh, of you're missing a land drop. Pass and return. Not where you want to be. Fifteen. Fetch here. It. When you well, miss a land drop and your opponent has a red and six, it is the worst feeling. Because it's like, ah, shit, dude. You forever get to play the game, unless I answer your run. Sure. Oh, three mana, going to play a Reason Reef here, get a trigger. Look at the top card of the deck, if it is a land, Mark can put it into play, otherwise it gets put into Mark's hand. There's like not a draw effect, so Leland plays something like, uh, I was at Hole Breacher, but that card's definitely not water legal. Uh, Narset Parter of Veils, it does not interact very, very favorably with Reason Reef. Now, you might be asking or wondering why I'm talking about Narset, Harder of Veils, when stock red, white, and blue does not play that card. I know Leland. I know that card is in the deck. I don't play that anymore. Sparas. Here comes a red and six from Leland. He's going to antagonize, he's going to agonize a little bit over whether or not he wants to downtick, kill that Risen Reef, or plus and pick up that Flood of Screams. I think very reasonably I, I think the play, play is to pick up the land I, when you've already I missed a land drop. Really 
I thought his leyline bindings were white bordered. I was like, damn, he's a monster of a human being. How dare he? But I'd also respect it a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's like the guy who plays as an entirely white bordered Doomsday deck in Legacy. I'm pretty sure he like white bordered Beta Duels or some crazy thing. At least that's what he told me. I think he told me. Which I don't know why he would do that. That's a lot of money. What if I endurance you in response? Ooh, draw. Right. Ren picking up the land. Three mana play to Fairy Time Raveler. In response to the Fairy, we're going to pitch a white card. And exile it to Solitude's Evoke ability, and we're gonna exile. We're definitely getting rid of that Risen Reef. Gets rid of to Fairy Hero Dominaria. Risen Reef is a card that if it goes unchecked, can be a absolute nightmare to play against. Because as long as they keep having elementals, they just keep it the draw card. And if Risen Reef doubles up or triples up, even you just so much value. Have you ever cast or <laughs> free cast a Solitude? And then drawn three cards off of it because of Risen Reefs. It's not okay. I drew an Ephemerate off of it. I was like, alright, cool, I'll get it back and draw three more cards. Like, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna bolt the red. Plus, pass. Really, we're gonna play that scalding turn that we know about. There's a Narset Party of Veils. It's like I know the future. Two, minus two, look at the top four cards for non creature, non land spell, or non creature, non land card. Is it also supposed to be non artifact? I don't think so. Because it gets Jace the Mind Sculptor. It takes a Jace. Draw card is it at the weird It's tempo. not a draw. Son of a bitch. I wish it was still in play. Ana? Ana, look at the creation. Sure. Draw the card. Except it's not. Because it's nice. Oh. I'm at 18. He pointed at the Omnath and caught me. I was like, ah, trigger. Nope. Nice enough. Yep. Fetching that Skull card. Probably getting another Triome. Yeah. Getting Zagos Triome? I don't. It's so hard to tell the different triumphs in the regular frames on camera, or at least it is for me. I don't see the regular triumphs too often. Everyone I know who plays with them uses the full arts because they've got that sweet comic book look to them. Except for the new ones. The new ones are lame. Um, I should just finish the comic book cycle. Maybe they'll do it in a secret way. Probably fetch draw. I guess let's just resolve this right away. Two damage. Two damage. Two damage. Two damage. Two damage. Real question is, is Leland minus one or Brainstorm here? Or Fate Seal? Though I think the Fate Seal is the least likely. I think there's a high capacity for Leland to bounce the Omnath here. Though it does open him up to recast Omnath. 
play land, or play a fetch land, and then mark double fetching, killing both planeswalkers. So many decisions, so little time. Because the only way really to avoid the both planeswalkers down here is the fate seal. But even then, like, it's going to die regardless. Either Omnath would attack or Ren will ping. More likely Ren would ping and you attack with the Omnath, but. <laughs> Mark doesn't even have to draw the fetch land or have it in play already. He can just pick it up with a red and six. Blue line binding. Answering to fairy time raveler. Drop the tray. Not drawing a card again. Plus, yeah. land, playing the land. Fetch. Okay, four fetch. lives for the fetch. I'm gonna fetch again. Planeswalkers will die. We only take three damage and go to 11. Two cards in it, which is a fairy time rather than us. The other one's a Kahira. He buys a Kahira maybe. Now Kahira's still over there. Playing for that card. Yeah, I'm confused. It looks a lot like a hero to me. Uh, so I have four mana, five, six, buy it and play it. Sure. Speaking of Kahira, buying and playing is off the extra mana from our math ability. Go ahead. Jace. Oh, okay. Jace. Going to brainstorm with this one. Chase, you? Leyline Binding. Going to exile the Kikura. I assume just because the Kikura is coming at the end. Second main. Or not coming at the coming yeah. at Chase. We will take four okay. damage from the Omnath. 26. 24. You shocked. Table the Mirror Breaker. Thank you. Excellent card. Parries very well with Ren and Six. Trigger Fable. Gonna make a Goblin Shaman. Fable's good. Oh, did I not do anything with Ren? And fetching down the six. You're gonna point that out on the stream, aren't you? That's fine. That was a legitimate. Putting a wrong environment to play. Just don't even need it. Part of my mind game is forgetting what permanents are on the board because it's so messy. Mark knew he was so far ahead in the game that he did not even want to fuck Ren. How's that one I topped for you? Does it help? Maybe not fetching down the six. Maybe just. Fetching down to seven. Brainstorm, put two cards back on top of the deck. Play a Misty Rain Horse as land return. 
a grand to ferry in here? Life happens fast. This is a lethal attack next turn. I see that. Fetch. I was right. He did go to six. Now he's going to five. All right, I'm validated. There's the supreme verdict that he kind of is in big need of. Oh, supreme verdict. Get it in the middle. Cut you to it. Judge. <laughs> Verdicts removed from my opponent's back after that. Time, Rabbit, Very. Yeah, it's fine. Bounces the Goblin Shaman. I needed something more. Not really sure why he didn't bounce the Omni. Might just not be paying enough attention to his life total. If I had minus on you last turn, you're still dead. I suck. I fucking suck. Oh, I'm still dead, but anyway. Oh, because you fetched. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. Alright, Leo is going to scoop it up. Mark will be taking it 2 0 with Kahira Elementals over Ren, White, and Blue. Thank you for watching, folks, and have a great day. Oh my god. <laughs>